Hello, I'm Red Feather Free. I'm going to talk to you today about where oil really comes from. And it's not, as we've been led to believe, a fossil fuel. In fact, it's created in a process known as abiotic oil. What abiotic oil is, is a byproduct of a metamorphic um, transformation from olivine, which is a, a rock that's found in the mantle of the earth, to peridotite and serpentinite, or in this process is known as serpentinization, this metamorphic change particularly that creates oil. Serpentinization also produces such things as methane, which we've been told is a big worry about in the Arctic and in the Siberian tundra, and it's all connected. See, the, the world is one system. The planet Earth is Gaia, and a scientist in the 70s came up with what's known as the Gaia Hypothesis. His name was Lovelace, and he says that all of the Earth's systems are part of Gaia, and that it's all designed to, to maintain what's known as homeostasis, or balance. So you could consider oil to be sort of the lifeblood or the lubricant running through the veins of Earth, and it's created naturally as a byproduct of this, this process known as serpentinization. Now, how does this work? Well, the world is divided along basically lines of tectonic plates. And in the 20th century and the 19th century, we came to form the, the tectonic plate theory, and it became accepted that the continents are drifting and moving, and that they're actually running into um, other plates, and that there are two types of crust. There's oceanic crust and continental crust, and the oceanic crust is considered heavier and denser, and it's also considered much younger than the continental crust. The continental crust is considered lighter and older, hence it's sitting above or on top of the oceanic crust, and when the continental plate collides with the an oceanic plate is what happens is a process known as subduction. So the oceanic plate becomes forced downward because it's heavier, it goes underneath the continental crust. Well when it goes down, this rock, this crustal rock and all the water and everything involved in it gets pushed down towards the mantle where the, the heat from the interior of the earth is much greater than it is on the crust. And this causes quite a change in these rocks. It creates magma which then, you know, comes back up in the form of volcanic chains. Hence the Sierra, Sierra Nevadas, the Cascades, etc. along the, the west coast of the United States of America. Or the volcanoes in, in um, for instance, uh, Japan. Okay, The Ring of Fire. We, we know this well. But that's not the only process, you see, because there are also known, uh, there are things also known as spreading centers throughout the ocean's crusts. And the most commonly known one is the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. But what geologists and scientists in modern times don't want you to know, and in general, I don't think they, they fully understand, is that the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is one giant continuous structure that ins wraps the entire globe. And it also goes into the continents, into the continental um, crust itself but it's called a different process in the continents. See, it's called rift valleys or continental rifting when it, when it occurs, when the spreading, if you will, occurs on the continents. When it occurs in the, the oceanic crust, it's called a, a, a spreading center. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge is a spreading center. And is what this does is it's creating this, this magma, this lava, if you will, that's being extruded out and forming new oceanic crust has to come from somewhere and it's coming from down inside the earth in the mantle. And as these, these mantle rocks are coming up and new crust is being created literally, it undergoes a process of transformation known as serpentinization because the rocks that are in the mantle are known as olivine. It's, a, it's like a dense green um, green rock and if you go to Hawaii you'll see a lot of uh, that they have like black or green beaches and this is because the the igneous rock there contains a high concentration of olivine in it 
Well, when all of the meaning gets moved up towards the surface of the Earth, it, it's introduced to a radically new environment where its temperature and its pressure are dr dramatically different than, it, than they were down in the mantle. And also it's introduced to seawater. And this creates the metamorphic process known as serpentinization. And a byproduct of serpentinization is hydrocarbons. And hydrocarbons are what we refer to as oil and other things like methane gas and calcium carbonate, certain things uh, as byproducts of the um, hydrothermal vents that are created by this process because is what happens is an exothermic reaction occurs, meaning that heat is produced by this, this metamorphic change. And that heat has the catalyst, according to some modern scientific theories, for how life originated. And I, I think that that's exactly true. And I also understand that the ancient, quote, mythologies to do with the god Mercury carrying his Sadducees and, and associating him with the stones and his Sadducees was wrapped with serpents and Mercury is associated with the serpent or Hermes with the serpent. The process of serpentinization is what this is referring to and how life originated. And if you understand that all life, all things are technically contain the spirit of life in them. Rocks and other things aren't completely inanimate as we think they are. They're just a different phase of animation. They're more inert, they're more dense, but as they become released into a different atmosphere, they, they can begin to change, and then life can spawn from this. Yes, this is how life originated originally, and I believe it's common throughout the solar system and most likely throughout the galaxy wherever this process is occurring and this is where oil is created and we have today been exploiting oil reserves all over the the world and claiming that they're they're running dry but in reality they're not and furthermore just to prove to you that it could not be a fossil fuel how is it possible that they've drilled down and accessed oil farther and deeper than any fossil has ever been found? And furthermore, a fossil fuel is something like coal, bituminous coal, which was formed basically when a swamp became covered up by other things and the swampy material produced gases and other things, bubbles that released and, and ended up forming coal, which is a, you know, a more or less like a, a rock that's wood, you can burn it. It's a, it's a rock that once was once vegetative material, but that is not at all what oil is. Oil is the lifeblood of planet Earth. It's the lubricant of which the continents move around on. I firmly believe this, and you can inspect it yourself. Furthermore, we can tell where this process has occurred and where it is occurring today by certain indicative minerals and rocks that we find. For instance, anywhere that we find peridotite or garnets throughout the earth, the process of serpentinization is probably going to have occurred nearby. And what's more, and part of my thesis in the ancient, uh, for the existence of the, the actual continents of Atlantis and, and or Mu before the great flood and the wiping away of that civilization in the beginning anew some you know, 10, 11,000 years ago, is that the ancients understood this process very well and they built all of their civilizations, their settlements, in these places where serpentinization was occurring. And it also happens to be where volcanoes and other things are at. They knew that this process was sacred and that it provided sources of fuel and sources of food first and foremost that they could use and harness to live throughout the natural climatic shifts that the earth undergoes due to what's known as the Milankovitch cycles. Now the Milankovitch cycles are what describe the earth's rotation around the sun and it has three different variations and a lot of people don't don't know what these are or have never heard of them and all three of these variations cause dramatic shifts in our climate over large periods of time, be it 26,000 years, which is the precession 
the cycle of precession of the zodiac, which is us going around the center of the, the galaxy. That's one thing, that's a precession of the equinoxes, which has to do with the tilt of our axis and the, the changing as the, the axis rotates, uh, the north, north pole shifts as we go around the precession of the equinoxes. For instance, this, the pole star right now is Polaris, but 11,000 or 12,000 years ago it was the star Vega, and vice versa, 12,000 years from now it will be Vega again as we go around. This creates a change in the way the light from the sun is striking the surface of the earth, so it's not necessarily that the climate is, is changing, it's, it's just shifting, meaning the patterns of climate on the earth shift where certain weather occurs. <clears throat> That's one part of the Milankovitch cycles. The other two have to do with the, the eccentricity of the orbit, meaning how far away from the sun or how close to the sun we are, which has an effect on, of radiated forcing. Obviously, the further away we are, the colder that we'll be, the closer we are, the hotter we'll be. Right now, we're kind of at our closest point almost, which is why we're getting hot. And the third has to do with the tilt of the equator. Now these create cycles of 26,000 years, 44,000 years, and 100,000 years roughly that mark rather abrupt shifts in our climate. They don't want people to know this. and It's, it's all by design. If you read the, the quote-unquote news or you pay attention to mainstream media, it's almost a joke. They really must think people are incredibly stupid. And I'm here to try and let humanity know and anyone that cares that, that we're not stupid and that you need to tune out of that and tune into some real stuff. Like people that don't have a vested interest in lying to you. Because let's face it, who is paying the salary of the guy that wrote the article about fossil fuels and peak oil or you know climate change being caused by humans and, and our, our use of, uh, of oil and things like that as a, as a fuel? No, it's, it's complete ludicrous. Now, do I think that we need to rethink how we use oil? Of course I do. Of course I do. Do I think that we need to waste resources? Of course I do not. We need to live in harmony and in a symbiotic relationship with Gaia, with Mother Earth. So the process of serpentinization in oil, this is how oil is created, and this is how it's replenished. For instance, in the East Texas oil fields that were discovered in the early 20th century and subsequently almost sucked dry, you know, within a few decades, well, they've all suddenly began refilling from the bottom up. Hmm. How is it again that, 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 that that's happened if the standard theory of fossil fuel is correct? The standard theory of, of how fossil fuel, i.e. oil, is created that they're, they're teaching in the, in the universities and through the, the propaganda outlets is that, well, a bunch of dinosaurs or sea life or plankton died and, and it got covered up by some other rocks or some dirt or something and then over millions and millions of years, like, it got compressed and compacted and all of a sudden it just, it just changed from bone into oil, just randomly. It was like that, just skeleton fossil to oil. So then, then I asked, where, how do we have fossils if oil comes from fossils? You see, w wouldn't the, the logic there dictate that something's wrong with that idea? If fossils turn into oil, how do we have fossils? This, this might be something you can, you can contemplate, okay? Because the, the blatantly obvious malarkey that's being passed off as science these days is, is absolutely ludicrous. Now, this is all I've got for today. I tried to follow what my yogi tea bag said this morning. Um, it says, say it straight, simple, and with a smile. And that's exactly what I've done. And just to let you know, today is November 20th, and I'm making this video. It's approximately 5.56 a.m. in the morning here in the beautiful heart of Texas in the hill country. I thank you for watching. Please, 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 please share this for the benefit of all. Do not keep this. Do not allow this to go unheeded. These words are true. Verify them. Go look up everything I've said. Please, I implore you. Knowledge is power. Peace.